Hey everyone. Uh, not too many people today. There's still time. Hmm? Okay, hello. So today well, I'm going to talk about magnetic fields once more because next week we have a guest lecturer and he will be speaking about um, differential equations. Okay, so hopefully, um, yeah, we might, might just be a little bit short uh, on time today, but um, let me uh, show you a couple of tricks that uh, I've prepared for you. Okay. Just one thing. Okay, so you should be seeing my screen. And I should be seeing your the chat. Okay, let me know if you can't see my screen and let me know if you can't hear me as well. Okay, so you already know uh, that if a particle enters a magnetic field, if a charged particles travels into a magnetic field, it will travel in a circular path. Let's Let's prove that. So I'm just going to go through example one. So um, if you have a magnetic field, it's a useful thing to do, magnetic field, and you have a particle that enters this magnetic field. So let's say we have a charged particle. So field, current, force. So if it's an electron, Let's say this is a negative, this is an electron, which is negatively charged. It enters the magnetic field. And the moment it enters the magnetic field, it starts traveling in a circular path. Um, and well, it depends on what's outside. If outside this field is zero, it will just change direction and fly backwards. But uh, we assume that there is a, continuation of the magnetic field. So a magnetic field will, so it will make a circle and return to the original position. How do we show that? Well, if, the, if it's traveling with velocity V, we can find that the force on the charged particle is QVB. And the direction can be found using the left-hand rule. Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> I'm really uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. having a bit of a login problem. <laughs> okay. Oh yes, uh, hello, hello everyone. Please welcome, welcome Sean. Uh, Sean is uh, the uh, designated safeguarding lead for uh, the physics department um, of at Oxford University. So uh, just a few words from Sean before we uh, well continue. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry to interrupt your um, your flow. Yeah, so I'm just coming here to say hello because. Um, I've sort of been in the physics department for a long time and I'm sort of in charge of looking after the welfare of young people that take part in all our pro programmes. Um, so this is a really big programme, it's been running for a couple of years and I'd like to give an introduction to myself. So if at any point you want to have a chat about something, you're a bit worried about your welfare, about somebody in your group, about your tutor, then you can come to me. There's also lots of people you can talk about to as well. So Vlad here, he's trained in safeguarding, as is Rachel. Um, so you have lots of people here who can support you if you feel like you need to talk to us about anything that um, to do with your welfare. And also your tutors as well can pass things on to us. Um, we 
you will see us dropping into your uh, webinar. So I plan to come into everyone's webinar in the new year just to say hello, um, see how they're running. It's really nice to see how um, stuck in you will be getting with these problems. Um, and what I'll do is I will leave my email address in the chat and you can get in touch with me at any point. And that's, that's a safeguarding email. It's either me or my colleague will pick it up. That's it really, just to say hello and I'll see you again in the new year. So I'll, I'll let you get on with it. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Yes. So a particle entering a uh, magnetic field or a particle traveling through a magnetic field you can find the direction using the left-hand rule. So the first finger is the magnetic field. So for me, it's into the page. The second finger is the current. Now this is an electron and it's traveling to the right. So the current is to the left. So I'm switching my, switching my fingers. So the thumb indicates the direction of the force. This is if you don't want to use the vector method that I've employed last last week. So the thumb shows the direction of the force. So there's a force on uh, the electron and the force is downwards. And once the electron does travels for some time, now the velocity is downwards and the force is to the left. And then again, this is the velocity, this is the velocity and this is the force. And when it's here, the force is this way and the velocity is this way. Velocity. So you can see that the velocity changes and the force changes with the velocity. So a few interesting things. So uh, the force is always perpendicular to the velocity. And that means that force times uh, multiply. So the work, work, is force multiplied by the displacement s multiply uh, which is equal to f multiplied by s multiplied by cosine 90 degrees because if they're always perpendicular and cosine 90 degrees is zero so that is zero so the work done on the particle is zero that means the change in kinetic energy of the particle is also zero so the magnetic field, the magnetic field, magnetic field, field uh, does not do, not do any work, any work on the electron. Okay, so so the electron it cannot accelerate, uh, it cannot make it go faster. It, of course, it accelerates the electron because you're moving in a circle. So there is acceleration, but you can't make it go faster. You can't. So if you if you think of the Large Hadron Collider in at CERN, it uses an electric field to accelerate the particles, and it uses a magnetic field to change their direction. And changing their direction does not increase their speed. The electric field increases their speed, and the but the uh, so yeah they both cause acceleration in a way, but um, yeah different types of acceleration, centripetal acceleration, and linear acceleration. So these are different different things. Magnetic field doesn't do any work, and um, if you write down the equation, so this is what you are taught in uh, at A level, or equivalent uh, thing that if that you are doing. So the force is equal to mv squared over r of the radius. This is because it's circular motion. And force is qvb equals mv squared over r. And uh, so you can cancel the v. And you can find the radius. r is mv over qb sometimes it is written as r equals m uh, so p over qb so then momentum 
That's the momentum of the particle divided by QB. So this is this is the easy easy side of things. So what we are doing in example one is we're actually proving it with uh, using the coordinate method, the vector method. Okay, right. So we know that Uh, we know that the force, the vector force, is Q V cross B. Okay. So we assume that the particle is moving along the x-axis. So we have a magnetic field. The particle is moving along the x-axis. So... We have the x-axis, and the particle is moving along that axis, V. Uh, the, the, vec the, the magnetic field vector is along the z-axis. Well, the z-axis must be towards us, well, assuming, assuming y is up. y is up. The magnetic, the magnetic, the magnetic force. The sorry, the z axis is towards us. Z out of the page, of page. Out of the page. That means that the magnetic field is along this z axis. So the magnetic field is out of the page. Like this. So we can write the magnetic field is a column vector, 0, 0, B. OK. So the velocity vector is V, 0, 0. So it's moving along the x-axis. And uh, yeah. Magnetic field has no effect on the in the in the z direction. Yes, the magnetic field cannot accelerate along the z direction. Okay, so what we say is uh, as, well, the velocity velocity of the particle through time is v x of time, v y of time, and zero because uh, the velocity in once again velocity in the z direction cannot change the the field cannot push you along the field the force component along the field is always zero okay okay now the We can find the um, the force force is Q V cross B. Now let's recall that this is Q. Then you can say the determinant of the matrix, and this is going to be I J K vectors I J and K. And this is going to be V, which is VX, VY, and 0. And B is 0, 0, B. OK. And we can see that it's Q, open bracket, I, VY, B, plus j v x b uh, minus sorry j v x b plus k times zero k times zero so if you are confused please watch the previous webinar i'm going through that in more detail how that works and then uh, i can 
I can write these out. It's Q B uh, V Y minus V X zero. Ooh, interesting. And this is what we see here. Okay. And the acceleration, well, I know force is mass times acceleration. So force and mass times acceleration is equal to QB VY VX zero. Uh, so acceleration is equal to QB over M VY VX zero. But on the other hand, we know that VY and VX is uh, the derivative of uh, dy over uh, in time. So this is db over m. And this velocity of y is sorry. Oh, of course. Uh, right, so we can... We can, we can, we, we are going to differentiate that. All right, so we have... We know acceleration is... We know uh, acceleration. Acceleration is the derivative of v with the dot. And this is q b. Uh, there's a minus here. Sorry, q b over m v y minus v x zero. Now I'm going to differentiate that a dot. So this is oh sorry. Okay, a dot is going to be v double dot, which is qb over m vy dot minus vx dot zero. But vy dot, we already know because this, this, is, this is this, okay? vy dot is qb over m. Uh, multiplied by QB over M again, uh, yes, and multiplied by, well, okay, sorry, is gonna be, because we already know, because A is VX, VY, uh, zero. Right, with a dot. So Vx dot, we already know. Vy dot, we already know. So Vy dot is going to be uh, minus QBM Vx. And v, Vy dot is minus uh, Q b m v y zero okay and that is uh q b over m 
minus QB over M uh, multiplied by VX VY zero. Okay. So what, what does this mean? What this means is V double dot, in short, V double dot is equal to minus QB over M V, right? And this looks very familiar to you. This is a very familiar equation. Remember Y double prime equals, we did this two weeks ago. Y double prime is minus omega, sorry, this is squared, minus omega squared, uh wh why right this is the, the, the this is the equation so the solution solution to this equation is v equals um a cos uh q b over m t plus B sine QB over MT. I believe that's what it says here as well. Okay. And the same is true for uh, so sorry. This is v. This is for vx. Sorry, this is for vx. And uh, similar in a similar way, we do vy. Okay, vy is going to be. Let's use different coefficients. C cos qb over m t. And plus. D multiplied by sine QB over MT. Right, so we found VX and VY because we can write we can write out uh, se se separate equations for for VX and v, uh, VY. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Sorry if I'm uh, if I'm if I'm uh, being complicated here. <laughs> Anyways, to find A and B. What you need to do is you need to substitute uh, t equals zero. When t is zero, vx is v, and vy is zero. So t is zero, so vx is equal to a cosine zero, so it's a multiplied by one, plus b multiplied by zero, and that is equal to V. So A is equal to V. VY equals C multiplied by one plus B, uh, D multiplied by zero. Uh, D multiplied by zero. And that gives us, and that's equal to zero. And that tells us that C is equal to zero. Okay. Can we assume that B is zero? Oh, we we can we can we can use the initial position to find uh, a and b. Okay, so we do this. 
Okay. I think I found a mistake here. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Sorry. <laughs> how long? How long have you not he heard me? For, for how long? The X part. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, so let me. Sorry, I think how uh, how well do you understand what I have done so far on a scale of zero to ten? But please, please, please be honest. On a, on a scale of zero to ten. Anyone else? Okay. Right. I think it would would be worth if I step back and uh, start start here. Do you understand? Um, do you understand here? So we we've. Do you understand? Do you understand everything up to here, guys? How about up to here? Uh, those who. Have sevens, do you understand up to here? Okay, okay, good. So I have F equals that. And that means mass times acceleration is equal to QB VY VX zero. And that means acceleration is QB over M VY minus VX zero. So from here, I can say that V uh, dash V dot, because acceleration is the der derivative of this, 
which is vx dot, vy dot, and zero is equal to QB over M uh, VY minus VX zero. I'm going to differentiate that again. We're going to differentiate that again. So it's going to be V double dot X V double dot Y zero equals QB over M VY dot minus VX dot and zero. But we already know that VX dot is QBM times VY. VX dot. So right here i can write qb over m open bracket minus vx dot minus vx dot is minus qb over m vy on the top it's vy dot and vy dot is minus qbm qbm vx and this is here so in other words, this is equal to minus QB over M VX VY zero. So I have two differential equations. I have a differential equation for VX and for VY. VX double dot is equal to minus squared minus QB over M squared VX and I have VY double dot, which is here, is equal to minus QB over M squared VY. Does that make sense now? What about uh, Muthoni, Edith? Why is there a minus for VY? Why is there a minus for VY? Uh, because when we when we find when we when we multiply V and B, I goes with a plus, but J always goes with a minus, that's why. And then plus. This comes from the definition of a of the vector product. So we have two differential equations. And the solution of this differential equation, we already know that the solution of the differential equation is Vx is equal to A cos QB over MT plus B sine QB over MT. Now using that Vx is equal to V when T is equal to zero. We substitute, so V equal, this becomes A plus zero. So A equals V. Now we find Vx dot, Vx dot, and we already know that Vx dot is QB QB over M VY. This is here. But we differentiate VX, which is this, and this is going to be A minus A QB over M. So I've I'm, I'm using the chain rule here. 
differentiating. I'm differentiating Vx, differentiating, and it's sine QB over MT uh, plus B QB over MT, uh, sorry, Q, Q, QB over M cosine uh, QB MT. And that's equal to QB over M VY. We know that VY is equal to zero when T is zero because this, this, because of this, yeah? We've established that. And that means that when T is zero, so we substitute T is zero, so this becomes zero. And that me and this is zero, and this is one, so b must be equal to zero. So, so b must equal to zero. So the solution v x is equal to v cos q b over m t. Vy Vy is going to be well, we have it here. Vy is minus V sine QB over MT. Right? Okay, and assuming that um, so the position, assuming assuming r is equal to r of t is equal to zero zero zero, assuming we're at the at the beginning at the at zero zero zero, uh, when when t is zero, we integrate. We integrate uh, v, so the position is the integral of v with respect to time from zero to t. And this is, uh, the integral from zero to t of V cos QB over MT minus sine QB over MT zero DT. We integrate and we get, what do we get? We get V M QB Now the integral of this is going to be minus, no, in the integral of course is sine. So it's sine, sine QB over MT. Now this one, this is going to be the integral of minus sine. The integral of minus sine is cos. So it's going to be cos QB over M T minus one because we sub we substitute zero and cosine a cosine zero is one and this is zero and this means that uh, why am I saying x of t? It's not x of t. It's r of t, sorry, the radius vector, and that's it. So the solution, the radius vector, the position of the particle is uh, mv over qb, and uh, it's gonna be sine qb over mt, cos qb over mt minus one, zero. And, uh, 
that is that is great because this is a circle. This is a circle with uh, if you if you well if you if this is x and y, then you start at zero zero, and this is the radius of the circle. And here, so it's going to be a circle like this. All right, you can you can verify that by squaring uh, squaring uh, these. Square this and plus this. I hope that makes sense. I, I'm sorry for being all over the place with this question. Uh, hopefully, that helps. Anyways, do you understand example one better now? Is that it? Yes or no? Okay. You just need to prove that this is a circle. And, uh, well, there are different ways of doing it. You can actually, uh, you say, You can use a parametric equation, Desmos. So uh, parametric. Oh, I forgot how to do parametric. Uh, Desmos parametric. Is it though? In brackets, yes. So it's going to be um, bracket. You need a comma, and then you put sine three t cos three t minus one comma zero. Oh, you don't need comma zero. And t is from zero to uh to five okay <laughs> uh slightly off but it is a circle as you can see there so this vector describes a circle, uh, but the circle uh, with, the, with the center is here. OK. So. And it just makes sense because minus 1 is always less than. Uh, so yes, there is a there is a mistake here in the example. So I'm very sorry about that. And this is going to be minus one here, but uh, yeah, minus one. Anyways, moving on. Problem two is very, very similar to one of the problems in the assignment. We have two long wires, uh, two long wires and uh, carry currents I and NI. Find the point where B is zero, where the magnetic field is zero. And we've established in the previous webinar that uh, the, the field around a long straight wire, B, is equal to mu zero I divided by two I, R. So there's a field around this wire, and using the right hand rule, it's anticlockwise. So there's a field this way, 
let's call it B1. And the field around this is B2. So in between the wires, the fields add up. So the fields cannot cancel each other out in between the two wires. What about here? So I'm going to make, uh, so the B, B2 is here and B1 is here. Okay, B1. So they can cancel out here. And I believe they can cancel out here because so you can have B2, B2 and B1. So they can either cancel out on this side or they can cancel out on this side. And this is what we're going to try to establish. Where do they, where is the, is there a point where the two fields cancel out and the resulting field is zero? For magnetic fields, you the principle of superposition. The principle of superposition says that at any point, if you have several sources of magnetic fields, the resulting magnetic field is the vector sum of the individual magnetic fields. So superposition, superposition means that the total magnetic field is B1 plus B2 plus etc. This is the principle, principle of superposition. Okay. So the f if the, uh, the if the wires are separated by uh, ten centimeters, yeah, I forgot to say D is ten centimeters. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Let's just make it separated by D. Okay, D is the distance between the wires. Okay, so now let's, we are looking for a point here. And let's say this point is X away from the second wire. So at point, uh, at point, let's call it point A. At point A. And at point A, we have B1 is equal to, so B1 is this field, is going to be equal to mu zero I multiplied by two pi, and the distance is D plus X, D plus X. B2, is equal to mu zero. And this is uh, up, B1 is up. Uh, B2 is mu zero multiplied by ni divided by two pi x, and this is down. And the field is zero if they are the same. That means the total is zero if mu zero i divided by two pi d plus x equals mu zero n i divided by two pi x. So i cancels, mu cancels, two pi cancel, and we have one over d plus x is equal to n over x. So x, we can find x. So x is equal to n d plus n x, x n one minus n, 
uh, is equal to nd. So x is equal to nd by 1 minus n. The answer makes sense if x is positive. That means, because if x is negative, it means go, we are going the other way. Uh, if x is positive, that means we have x is greater than 0. That means we have 1 minus n has to be greater than 0. That in n has to be equal to less than 1. That's important. If you try to find a line where this applied, this would be a line. This would be a line of a line of points which is parallel to the wire. So if you have two long wires, two long wires. So somewhere along this line, the magnetic field is zero. So this is the wire carrying current I. This is the wire current carrying current N N I. N I. So somewhere here along this wire, A, the magnetic field is zero. Now let's look at the other situation. I haven't left myself enough space. I suspect it's going to be a different expression. I suspect it's going to be a different expression. So we have uh, I, we have NI. So we are on this side now, we are at point B. And this is B1 is down and B2 is up, B2 is up. So at point, so let's say this is, uh, well, let's, let's give it a different name. Let's call it W, and this is D. So at point, point B, um, B1 is equal to mu, mu zero, I multiplied by two pi W, and this is down. And V2, the magnetic field from this wire is, is clockwise. So B2 is up and it's mu zero Ni divided by two pi W plus D. And this is up. And if they are equal, so mu zero i divided by two pi w equals mu zero n i divided by two pi w plus d, mu zero i, mu zero two pi cancel. We have w plus d is equal to w n. So w w n minus one is equal to D. So W is equal to D divided by N minus one. So you can see it's a different expression. It's a different expression and um, N has to be greater than one. Okay. 
So maybe maybe try to make sense of this. Um, basically, if the distance, so uh, sanity check, let's call it a sanity check. T check. If D is 10 centimeters and N is three. So we have and let's say for simplicity, I is uh, one amp. So this is one amp. This this is three amps out of the page. Oh, sorry, three amps into the page. And N is three, so it's going to be on this side. And it makes sense because you need to be closer to this wire than to this wire. In order for them to cancel out, you have to be on this side. And W is equal to uh, D over N minus one. So T D over N minus one, which is D divided by three minus one, which is five centimeters. So if you're five centimeters away from here, and this wires are separated by 10 centimeters, you can see that this wire is three times further away, but the current is three times stronger. So the fields are the same because you see field is proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the distance. So it makes perfect sense, right? And uh, let's, let's try another sanity check. So if, uh, a, if current is one amp, no, let's let's say current is five amps and um, D is 10 centimeters and N is 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So then we have a situation like this. So we have five amps here. We have one amp here, they're separated by 10 centimeters. And now we're on this side, now on this side, and it makes sense again, right? We, uh, and so what is it? What is the distance? Uh, N, N, ND uh, divided by one minus N. ND, so X is ND divided by one minus N, which is ND, which is uh, 0, 0 0.2 times two, so it's two centimeters divided by one minus N, which is going to be 0 0.8, which is two divided by 0 0.8. So embarrassingly, I is 2.5, 2.5 centimeters. So 2.5 centimeters. Does that make sense? Well, you are five times closer to the one amp wire. It makes perfect sense. Okay. Any questions? We are, uh, I'm going to do two more very similar questions. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. Problem three, two wires, one and two, each carry a current I. At what point between one and two should you place a third wire? And what is the direction of the current so that such that uh, B is zero at point A? So you have two currents, both wires, one, one. So you understand that these are wires carrying current. And let's say the current is coming towards us out of the page. Current out, out of the page. So you have two currents out of the page and they both produce a magnetic field around the wires. 
Okay, so let's see. So it's towards us, so it's anti clockwise. So one produces a magnetic field this in this direction. The first wire produces a magnetic field in this direction, B1. And uh, the second wire produces a magnetic field in this direction, B2. Oh, it's going to be weaker, but I'd rather make this one bigger. So, yeah. Okay. This is D. And this is D as well. D and D. And this distance is square root two, square root two D using Pythagoras. Uh, oh, why do I do that? I can where why not? Where is I can just. Just like this, B2. OK, so let's just write out B1 is equal to mu 0 i divided by 2 pi d. And B2 is mu 0 i divided by 2 pi square root 2 d. Fantastic. And now we need we need the total. Total. So the the total field. Well, how do we do do we want to, do you do want to do this? You you can use you can use vectors. Okay. And actually that would make sense. Yeah, B total. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to find B1 as a column vector. To do this, I'm going to draw axes. I'm not going to invent a bicycle here. So I'm just going to go very simple. This is X. And this is y. I'm going to x, and this is y. So that means vector b1 is minus mu 0 i divided by 2 pi d 0. And vector b2. Now it is at a right. It is a, it is at an angle, so we need to multiply by cosine of the angles and sine of the angle. So B two is going to be. Uh, oh, you know what? Let's make it even simpler. Minus one. I'm going to take. I'm going to take this. I'm going to take this this out. It's going to be mu zero i divided by two pi d. That's going to be minus one zero. So here I'm going to have b two vector b two is mu zero i two pi d. Open bracket. So it's going to be one over square root of two, so it's going to be one half uh, minus one half and minus one half. Do you understand why? It's forty five degrees. It is forty five degrees. Yes, because this this is a right angle. This is an isosceles right angle triangle. Forty five degrees, and um, this is going to be cosine forty five and sine forty five. You know what? 
I'm going to say it's going to be uh, B2. So it's going to be uh, minus one multiplied minus one half minus one square root of two multiplied. So this is mu zero i over two pi d multiplied by one over square root of two. Uh, I'm just making it similar to this. Multiplied by cosine 45, because it's x, and this is minus one square root of two multiplied by sine 45. And this gives us mu zero i divided by two pi d, open bracket, minus a half, minus a half. Hope that makes more sense. The total vector b1 plus b2 plus b2, the total uh, total vector is going to be mu zero i, two pi d. It's going to be minus three over two minus one half. Okay. So the, the total field, if you have vector B1 and B2, the total field is going to go like this, B total, B total. So we have to have, we have to have a third wire here that produces a field clockwise. And it uh, has to create a field of the same magnitude as B total. So it has to have a has to we have to have a field like this. Okay. And the distance so it's somewhere here. Okay, so let's call this distance, this x, this is x, and this distance, therefore, this distance L, right. And this is B3. B3 has to be the opposite of B total. So it's going to be mu zero i divided by two pi d, three over two, one half. Okay, so somewhere here, somewhere at this point, we have another, a third wire which produces a magnetic field B3, which is in the opposite direction. So it's a clockwise. So uh, we've established, well, it has to be a current going into the page. And okay, so we don't know that, but we don't know that current uh, either, right? We, uh, so suppose at uh, the third current is I3, so third current, third wire carries current I3 into the page, the page. Then the magnetic field B3 is going to be, B3 is going to be uh, mu zero I three divided by two pi L and L is the distance, but we know that L two pi L is X squared plus D squared. So it's X squared plus D squared. That's the, the 
step one. Step two is to find the components of B3. Well, the components of B3 Uh, so what can we do? We can say B3, we have two components, horizontal component and the upwards component. And if this, can we find the angle? Well, we can, we certainly can, because uh, this angle theta, theta, the angle theta is, uh, this is three to two, so one 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 third. Theta is arc tan one third, which is well, tan theta is one third. Tan theta is one third, and that means that cosine theta, so it's one to three, one plus nine, so square root of 10. So cosine theta is three square root 10, and sine theta is one square root 10. Okay, being, being mathsy. Math see here. So we, we can split the components. So vector B3, vector B3 is equal to uh, mu zero I3 over two pi square root of X squared plus D squared multiplied by uh, cos theta sine theta, which is mu zero i3 over two pi x squared plus d squared, multiplied by, that is three root 10 and one root 10. Okay, so b3 is, uh, is, a, is, a th is the third is the third uh, magnetic field, and it has to equal to the sum of the first two, with the with the with the negative sign. So we we know that this has to equal to mu zero i divided by two pi d. Open three, o on two, one on two. Okay, so we made them equal, and now we. What can we do? Well, we can say that, well, we can cancel mu zero. We can cancel the two pi. So we have I three divided by square root of X squared plus D squared multiplied by three square root 10 equals I over D multiplied by three on two. So three cancels. Can we do here? I think we'll need to square them. So I3 squared multiplied by D squared equals I squared X squared plus I squared D squared. So X squared. Okay, well, keep that. Let's see what we have from the second one. So I3 over square root of x squared plus d squared, one over root 10. Oh, I forgot the 10. I lost the 10. So it's gonna be 10 here. Okay, uh, one over 10 equals i on d, one half. I lost the two as well, so I3, so there's four. So here I have D, so 2D, so 4D I3 squared, 4D squared I3 squared equals 10 
i squared x squared plus 10 i squared d squared um yeah it doesn't make any sense they have, they're the same thing so can we make Well, we to we we do because we we have x we need x and we need i three. That's that's the thing. And um, Of course, we know the angle. This is theta, so this has to be theta as well. So uh, we know that x, uh, x, x to d is one third. Yes, of course, because this has to be a right angle. The angle between B3 and this line has to be a right angle. So uh, this is theta, so x on d is one third. So x on d is one third so x is uh one third d that's easy and uh you can see you can substitute that in so it's four i three squared d squared equals uh 10 i squared x squared is d squared over nine plus d squared Yep, so 4i3 squared d squared, got 10i squared, and this is uh, 9 plus so 10 d squared over 9, d squared cancels, and we can 36, so i3 3 squared equals 100 over 36 i squared. So i3 is 10 sixths i. So i3 is a 5 on 5 thirds, 5 thirds i, which is brilliant. Okay, please put myself. Uh, no, our answer cannot be in terms of I3 because we need to find I3. So just a quick recap of the question. So you had, you had a wire carrying a current like this. You have a wire carrying a current like this. At this point, they both produce a magnetic field. They both produce a magnetic field. This wire, one, produces a field in this direction, B1. This wire produces a field in this direction, V2. The resultant field is in this direction. That's the total field. You have a third wire placed in between the two, so somewhere here. And the, and the, and the current is going into the page. That's a third wire. This wire produces a field around itself, and the field is going that way, B3. Your task is that B3 has to cancel out with the two, with the other two. 
Now this is what I've done. So I found B1 as a vector. I found B2 as a vector. So I found the total of the two. And then I equated them to B3. I know the angle. So I found the angle. And it turns out that the angle is, uh, if you take this angle, this angle is theta. And it's the same angle as this one, as this angle, theta. And that angle, so tan theta, is equal to one third. Okay. And then everything else is maths. How well do you understand on a scale of zero to 10, please? Tens. Okay. Uh, this is a very similar one. So now these these are now these wires we are looking at them. Through the top. So you have two wires which look like this, and they both carry a current. So if let's label them, if this is wire one and this is wire two, what is the direction of the field B1? B1, what is the direction? Let's check your understanding. B1 is the field produced by the first wire. This is the first wire. The first wire produces a field at point A. You use the right hand rule. This one, the right hand screw rule. No. <laughs> around a wire, the field around the wire. So if you have a current, okay, I think I've identified a problem. So if you have a current flowing through a wire and the current is, let's say, down, there's a field around it in a clockwise direction. You use the right hand. So if the wire is horizontal and the current is flowing to the right, what is the direction of the field at point A? Anyone? Don't be shy. Oh, I don't bite. Yeah, out of the page of the page, out of the page. So if you take the wire in your right hand, the magnetic field wraps around it. So what is the magnetic field produced by the wire two? Wire two has a field like this. So at point B, at point A, sorry, B2 is into the page, yes, into page. So you find B, uh, B1, B0, I1, divided by two pi uh, D, and B2, well, you don't need, it's not, you don't need vectors. It's mu zero, I two divided by two pi two D. And they, um, 
because they are the currents are the same, but the distance in oh, okay, and the total field, total field, b total is equal to. So the field in uh, out of the page is stronger because you are closer to the first wire. So it's going to be b one minus b two is going to be uh, uh, mu zero multiplied by one my by, by i divided by uh, 4 pi d. So mu 0 multiplied by 1 amp divided by 4 multiplied by 3.14 multiplied by the distance, which is ten, uh, 1 centimeter, so 0 0.01. And uh, so mu 0 mu 0 Three, three, zero multiplied by one divided by four, four pi uh, multiplied by zero point zero one. So the answer is zero or oh, one. One times ten to the minus five. Uh, Tesla. That's the that's the total field. Okay, very very weak. Roughly the same as the magnetic field of the Earth of the planet Earth. Okay, problem five. An electron in magnetic field has a velocity b. What is the value of b that was so that of the electron will pass through point c? So I don't have time to do the whole question. But um, you can see that the, the electron has components along the field and perpendicular to the field. So you have a velocity parallel to the field and perpendicular to the field. Velocity, let's call it Vx and no, V parallel and v perpendicular. And you know that the force is equal to q v b, q v times b. But if the velocity is parallel to b, the force is zero. So the component of the force due to this one is zero. So v, v, I, v parallel is not affected not affected. affected. So what would happen if V1 was zero? What would happen to the electron if this one was zero? So we, we can completely forget about it. How would the, would the particle move in the magnetic field? There's only one answer possible. The particle is moving up, so how would it move in a magnetic field if it's just moving up? What would the magnetic field do to it? Force it into the page? Well, yes, well, it will cause it to moving in a circle, right? In a circle like this, well, well, for to you it would be like this, yes. The electron would move like this. However, the electron is not only moving like this. I'm going to use this as an electron, like this. It is also has a, a component parallel to the magnetic field. So it would move like this. It would move in a spiral the electron would spiral, electron would spiral. And basically it would go into the page, then like this, and then return to, well, and go through point C. Very 
would go like this, spiral, and we return to C. Okay, so it would, this is A, this is C, this is A, this is C, and the electron would go like this and hit C. So you have the horizontal velocity, which is uh, V cos alpha, horizontal velocity. So horizontal velocity is V cos alpha, and it is constant. It does not change. And perpendicular to the field, it's moving in a circle. So it would cause it to move in a circle. So it would uh, go like this. So you go this and come back. Oh, sorry, it's the wrong picture, not like this. Uh, it would go like, it would go like this. So Like this, like a spiral, if you understand what I mean. So the electron will go make a spiral and return and, and come to point C. So horizontally, it's moving at constant velocity. Uh, but if we look, if we look from the point, if we look, if we, if you, if our eyes were here, if my eye was here, what would I see? I would see the magnetic field, the three magnetic field lines B. And I would see the electron uh, starting from this point, and it would make a circle and return. So uh, the electron is at point A. It would make it would make a loop and come and return, but not to point A, to point C, because the point it would go a loop and return. A loop and return. Does that make sense? Do you, you understand? So it would go in a, it travel in a spiral like this. Okay. All right, I'll leave you here. Sorry about that. Um, I hope I haven't left you more confused than you were. I haven't, didn't have time to talk about the bubble chamber, but uh, this is uh, very extensively covered in A level in the particle physics course. So, um, Enjoy the remaining uh, two, one and a half weeks of, oh, two weeks of uh, the, the assignment. And I'll see you, uh, see you uh, next week. Bye. Uh, next week is, we have a guest lecture.